So welcome back to Adventures in Randomia, an animated D&D solo adventure. This is episode two, where Freya and Clarissa step out into the snowy wilds, heading for the mysterious ruined castle on the north side of the island. I hope you enjoy, and please do drop me a line with any questions, comments, or tips from your own experience. Last time, our two adventures, Freya and Clarissa, arrived in the small port of Ice Hollow, on one of the northern islands of Rondomia. They met a curious stranger, a wizard named Myeldros, in the Salty Dog Tavern. With the promise of adventure, they accepted a quest to accompany him to an abandoned castle on the northern side of the island to retrieve a magical artifact bequeathed him by his old wizard teacher. However, before they could embark on their journey through the snowy wilds of the castle, they discovered that Myeldros has been critically injured during the night. They find him barely alive in his room in the morning, and discover that he has been attacked by an unknown assailant. Unable to heal him, they gather the clues and set out to discover what lies behind this attack and to continue his plan to journey to the castle. Well, that's a bit of a dead loss, said Freya. He was supposed to lead us to the castle. Yes, but what should we do about the Eldros? asked Clarissa. Surely we should try and track down his attacker and find out how to revive him. Yes, that's a good idea, says Freya. Finding that attacker may lead us to the castle. I bet this is all about this ancient artifact he was yammering on about. Let's head out and follow their trail. They asked the bartender if he knows the way to the castle. Oh yeah, the castle's about 15, 20 miles from here, on the north side of the island. Here's a track that leads north out of the town, just beyond the tavern here. It's likely still covered with snow this time of year, but there are tall sticks in the snow that mark the path. And watch out, because you'll likely meet some nasty beasties on the way too. They start to pull on their winter coats and boots. Hang on a minute, says the bartender. What am I supposed to do with your friend up there? Well, he's not exactly our friend, but we're going to try and find out how to revive him, says Clarissa. Maybe you should call the town guard and let them know what's happened. And with that, they heave on their backpacks and head out of the door. Outside, it is a fine and clear day, but still quite chilly despite the bright sunshine. They spot an old stone path at the end of the town and start heading north. Before long, they can no longer see the stones as the track is covered in a layer of snow, but they see the markers of thin sticks poking out the snow every hundred yards or so. Their boots scrunch in the snow as they proceed. They keep a lookout for tracks that the mysterious attacker may have left. Clarissa rolls a 15 perception. So we ask the question, do they see evidence of tracks in the snow? We roll a two. No, they do not. Ahead of them, the snow lies pristine and unbroken by tracks. It is clear that no one has been this way recently. So let's find out how this terrain continues. We roll on the Arctic terrain table and get a 23. So it's continuing Arctic terrain. We also ask whether they manage to continue following the path. Freya rolls a 16 for survival, so yes they do. Before long, they are well outside the town in a beautiful but treacherous snowy landscape. We then want to find out if there is an encounter in this area. We roll on the D100 and get less than 20, so yes there is. We then roll again on the wilderness encounter table and we get a 21, which is an interesting traveller. So let's discover which direction the interesting traveller approaches from. So we roll a d8 and we get southeast. So this must mean that this interesting traveller is following them because the path is coming from the southeast to the northwest. So we then roll on the NPC tables to discover what kind of travel this is. And we find out this is a female half elf. She is chaotic evil. She has the profession of a butcher and she is angry. So at this point, this suggests a hostile traveller. So we're going to ask directly in the Q&A, is this person hostile or friendly? And we get below 50, so she is hostile. Given what we have discovered so far about this interesting traveller, I'm also going to roll for a combat class for her. So we roll the d12 and we get nine. So she is a rogue. So let's find out if they detect this half-elf following them. 
We check her stealth and she rolls a 20. Clarissa's passive perception is 15. So no, they don't see her. As they continue along the snowy path, Clarissa hears the soft crunch of a footstep in the snow behind them. She wheels round and says, who's there? But there is no one in sight. Freya immediately draws her great axe ready for action. Then we want to know how far away is this hostile half-elf. As she's stealthed, we roll a d4 to discover how many squares away she is. We roll a 1, so she is within melee attack range. Freya and Clarissa peer around, trying to see the source of the noise. Suddenly, a female half-elf, dressed in tattered leathers, leaps out from behind a nearby boulder, her short sword glinting in the sunlight. She rolls a 20 for her attack and then five damage plus an extra three damage for the sneak attack. With a swift motion, she slashes at Freya, catching her off her guard, plunging her short sword into Freya, leaving her gasping for breath. The rogue then attacks again with her offhand sword and wounds Freya a second time for four damage. We then roll for initiative. The half elf gets an 18, Clarissa rolls eight and Freya rolls four. The half-elf attacks again, this time targeting Clarissa. However, Clarissa's warding flare dazzles the rogue. Despite this disadvantage though, she still hits Clarissa, wounding her for eight. Fast as lightning and with the same agility and grace as before, she strikes out at Clarissa with her short sword. The warding flare dazzles her for a moment with a flash of light, but her aim is still true and she strikes Clarissa, wounding her badly. The rogue then slashes again with her offhand sword, but fails to connect. Despite her severe wounds, Clarissa casts Guiding Bolt. As she is within melee range, she casts this with disadvantage. So we roll for the attack twice, and we get a 12 and then a 9. So we take the lower value, and with her plus 5 modifier, she just hits a 14. And then she rolls 20 damage. Clarissa channels her inner power and focuses on the figure in front of her. She lifts her hand to the heavens, and a bright bolt of divine energy shoots from her hand towards the assailant. But the half-elf is quick and manages to dodge out of the way of the full blast. However, she is, still takes significant damage from the bright burst of energy. Her eyes flash with rage and frustration as she realises the fight is far from over. Freya then swings her great axe and succeeds in her attack at 21. And she does 12 damage. Freya takes a deep breath, grits her teeth. She raises her great axe high. She swings it down with all her might. The blade glints in the sunlight as it cuts through the cold air. The half-elf tries to dodge, but she's not quick enough. She takes the full force of the two-handed blow from the Dwarven Great Axe. The body of the half-elf slumps into the snow. Wow, she came out of nowhere, says Freya. But what a great team we are. You fairly roasted her with that holy shit you do. And my trusty axe finished her off. She pats the bloodstained blade. Freya grins with exhilaration at Clarissa, but then notices her friend is swaying slightly and breathing heavily. Hey, Clarissa, you're hurt pretty bad. You better heal yourself. Clarissa casts Cure Wounds on herself and heals herself back up to full health. They search the body for loot. We roll on the relevant loot table and we get a six. Uh, so they find a gemstone that's worth ten gold. Then we ask whether there are any clues on this half-elf. Freya rolls a natural 20 for investigation. So if there is anything, she's going to find it. She thoroughly searches through all the pockets. She spots a pocket hidden inside the jacket's lining. So we then ask the question, is there a clue in this pocket? And we're going to put a plus five modifier on that since we had the natural 20 for investigation. So we roll an 11 plus five, 16. So yes, there is a clue. So let's now find out about what this clue is, what information it gives them. So let's ask first of all, was this the person who attacked my Eldros? We're going to roll a d20 with a plus three modifier to say that it's likely. So we get eight plus three, eleven. So yes it is, but there's a but. So we then ask why did she attack him? And we get the keywords stray, silence, equipment and blood. So does this suggest he strayed? Does that mean they were in a relationship? Was she trying to silence him? Was she trying to take the payment in blood? Did he have some equipment that she needed? Then because of the yes but role earlier, I'm also going to ask, why did she not kill him outright? And we get the words camp, 
ruined temper and illusion. So the attack was an illusion. He's not really dead. It's a temporary effect. Now this links to a previous keyword that we got in the guest room of temporary. She was angry with him. He ruined something. They camped together. This suggests they were working together. Inside the hidden pocket, Freya finds a note written on a piece of rough folded paper. My dear Lyra, I can no longer wait in the camp for you. You have strayed off one too many times. I have taken the key and decided to head on alone. After all, it is my blood we need to open the lock. I hope you're not angry with me. Yours ever, my old boss. She also finds a small vial of potion of healing and a small intricately carved silver key that looks like it may be for a chest or a lock. Oh, says Clarissa, this suggests they were working together. But then my Eldros went off without her, and now she's come after him. And she attacked him in revenge and took his blood and the key to unlock the artifact in the castle. So where is this blood that's needed? asks Freya. Hmm, good question, says Clarissa. Hold on a minute, did you say you found a healing potion on the body? Oh yes, here it is. Freya holds up the vial of red liquid. Clarissa scrutinises it. I don't think this is healing potion. I think this is my Eldress's blood. The two of them look down at the half-elf's body, looking small and crumpled in the snow. She was one crazy lady, taking on both of us like that, says Freya. And she nearly succeeded. It could be us lying in the snow now, says Clarissa. I'm thinking we can't just leave her lying in the path like this. Yeah, good thinking, says Freya. We don't want anyone from the town finding the body and then tracking us down as the villains. The two of them easily roll the half-elf into the deeper snow off the path and then cover her over. They then take some piles of fresh snow and use it to cover over the sides of the skirmish on the path. With that job completed, they continue their journey. After a few minutes of walking, Freya says, I'm not one to complain, but I feel like I need a bit of a rest. They decide to stop for lunch as Freya is badly wounded. Freya makes a survival check for finding a sheltered place to rest. She rolls a 17 plus 3. She spots an old fallen log next to a dead tree not far from the path. They make their way over to it and they clear off the snow and sit down to take a short rest. They eat the thick bacon sandwiches that the bartender has packed for them. Freya rolls a 9 plus 3 to regain her hit points back to full health. Oh, I feel so much better, she says. I must get the recipe off the bartender for this ale. There must be iron in this brew. What do you think of our journey so far? Says Clarissa. Is this what you were expecting? Expecting? Don't know. Hadn't really thought about it. I'm just keen to get to that castle and see what the treasure is there. Clarissa nods. How come you chose to leave your clan and start adventuring? Oh, because my older brothers kept teasing me and said that a wee baby girl couldn't be a barbarian. So I thought, I'll show them. I just want to see their faces when I come back with all this treasure. Trusa nods. I hadn't really thought about the rewards this way of life could bring. I had to leave the temple. It became obvious I was the domestic cat. They thought I'd been left on their daughter as a kitten. So my only option was to start a new line. So you have no clan, then? No, says Trusa. She pauses. And I don't know where to look for them. The priest didn't have a clue where I'd come from. Don't worry, says Freya. I'll help you find your family. And this is where we will leave our adventurers for now, enjoying their lunch in the Arctic sunshine. Tune in next time to follow them further north and for their first night out in the Arctic wilds. <laughs>